Proper hand washing is one of the most important steps that you can take to avoid getting sick and spreading germs to others. However, you may be choosing the wrong hand soap. Keep watching because in today's video, I'm gonna point out the types of hand soaps you wanna avoid and what to choose instead. Many diseases and conditions can be spread by not washing your hands. By removing germs from the surface of the hands, it helps to prevent infection. People are always absentmindedly touching their mouth, their nose, their eyes, and this can transfer microbes that cause diseases from the hands to these areas. Germs from unwashed hands can also be transferred into foods through food handling, cooking, and preparing meals. Some of these germs can even grow and multiply in the food and make people really sick. Germs can also be transferred from unwashed hands to surfaces like doorknobs and handrails. Then when someone comes along and touches those surfaces, they pick up those germs and can get sick. Removing germs from the hands helps prevent diarrhea, respiratory infections, skin infections, and eye infections. We know that washing the hands with soap and water gets rid of more germs and is more effective than water alone. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you might be going after the wrong type of soap. What is the wrong type of soap? Antibacterial soaps are problematic in the realm of hand washing for the general public. Antibacterial soaps and hand washes are those that have ingredients with antimicrobial activity versus plain hand soaps and hand washes that don't contain these ingredients and don't make claims to be active against microbes. Up until relatively recently, one of the most common ingredients in antibacterial soaps was triclosan, which was introduced in 1960. People choose antibacterial hand soaps and hand washes largely because they have been influenced by marketing to believe that choosing an antibacterial hand soap or hand wash over just a regular one will be more effective at removing germs from the hands and preventing illness and spread of germs to others. But is it? Truthfully, there's no research to show that washing your hands with an antibacterial hand soap or hand wash is any better or any more effective than just using a regular hand soap. And I'll explain why this is in a moment. Not only is washing your hands with an antibacterial hand soap or hand wash no more effective than just regular soap, it actually can cause a lot of very concerning problems for you and for the population as a whole. So much so that the FDA actually banned 19 different antibacterial ingredients found in over-the-counter antiseptics and hand washes and hand cleansers meant to be used outside of the healthcare setting. Let me know in the comments, are you a fan of Dial Soap? Dial Soap used to contain triclosan, but due to concerns with long-term safety and efficacy, triclosan has since been banned. And so Dial Soap now has another antimicrobial ingredient, benzalkonium chloride. However, benzalkonium chloride, like triclosan, has many of the same concerns. It's just now that that's what's allowed, so Dial Soap changed up their formulation. You'll find it not only in Dial Soap, but other antibacterial soaps like Soft Soap. Dove even has an antibacterial hand soap you want to avoid using these. Instead, just use a regular hand soap that doesn't have an antibacterial ingredient that isn't marketed as antibacterial. It's not any better to use an antibacterial hand soap than it is to use a non-antibacterial hand soap. Washing your hands with antibacterial hand soaps as opposed to regular hand soaps comes with a lot of added risk. By choosing antibacterial hand soaps over regular hand soaps, you are contributing to a growing and widespread problem known as antimicrobial resistance, basically the formation of superbugs that become resistant to our treatments, and that's really a problem. Evidence suggests that triclosan and benzalkonium chloride do contribute to the emergence of superbugs, basically microorganisms that are resistant to antimicrobials, and that's really a big problem for the health of the population as a whole. It's not just an issue at the surface of your skin, but these ingredients are subsequently being rinsed down the drain and getting into the environment. So that can really contribute to the emergence of superbugs. Then you also have to consider your skin's microbiome. What the heck is that? Well, you have a lot of good microorganisms that live on the surface of your skin and are important for skin barrier function. There's mounting concern that by using an antibacterial hand soap over a regular hand soap, you are actually disrupting some of the good bacteria and good microorganisms that live on the skin surface and are critical for skin barrier function. Ultimately, that's thought to play a role in the development of allergic contact dermatitis to these hand washes and hand soaps, 
and or irritant contact dermatitis to these hand soaps and hand washes. So you're really just increasing the risk of problems by choosing antibacterial soaps over regular soaps. There's also some concern that when people use an antibacterial hand soap, it gives them a false sense of security and they may be more negligent in terms of proper hand washing. There is a right way and a wrong way to wash your hands. And if you're too confident because you're using an antibacterial hand soap, which again, is no better than a regular hand soap in terms of hand washing. If you have that level of confidence, you may wash in a hurry, you may not get all surfaces. One thing that's crystal clear when it comes to hand washing, it's not so much about the ingredients in the hand soap or hand wash, it's about the amount of time that you spend rubbing the hands together and ensuring that you adequately get all surfaces of the hands. At the risk of looking like a creep, just observe people in a public restroom washing their hands. Most people do this and do this really quickly. Uh, that's not good. To properly wash your hands, you need to rub them together for at least 20 seconds. 20 seconds has been shown to remove the most bacteria as well as potentially harmful chemicals from the skin surface. You wanna make sure that you're rubbing not only your palms together, but also the backs of your hands, the sides of your fingers, in between your fingers, around the nails, and the fingertips. These are areas that people commonly forget, they commonly skip. Like I said, just watch people wash their hands in a public restroom. You will see that they really don't take the time to do it and they miss areas. The way hand washing works is not by putting antibacterial ingredients on the skin, it's rather rubbing the skin together and generating a lather on all surfaces. So the way this works is lathering with soap or hand wash plus water for 20 seconds. That is optimal for trapping dirt, germs, and potentially harmful chemicals. And then when you rinse the hands clean, those harmful things are rinsed off of the hand down the drain. Having an antibacterial ingredient in the hand soap doesn't impact this. It doesn't lead to cleaner hands. It, it does nothing but put you at risk for contact dermatitis, put you at risk for disruption of the uh, skin microbiome, put the population as a whole at greater risk for the emergence of resistant superbugs, and it may give you a false sense of confidence in your hand washing, leading you to be negligent and skip areas. Is there any situation where using an antibacterial hand soap is warranted? There are some exceptions. For example, in certain situations with healthcare workers, then it may be warranted. And some studies do suggest that there is a reduction in the risk of surgical site infection with the use of antibacterial soaps. So in other words, if your healthcare provider has recommended that you use an antibacterial hand soap for a particular thing or prior to surgery, then by all means, follow their recommendations. But for everyday people, the population as a whole, for day-to-day -day hand washing to prevent the transmission of colds and flus, to keep you from getting sick and transferring bugs and germs to others, it's hand washing with a basic hand wash or hand soap and water. It's not about the ingredients, it's about the amount of time that you spend to generate that lather on all surfaces of the hands in order to adequately remove dirt, germs, and potentially harmful chemicals. What about hand sanitizers? Hand sanitizers are an option when you don't have access to hand wash or soap and water. In those situations, it's advised to use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. Alcohol-based hand sanitizers work differently from soap and water and that alcohol-based hand sanitizers work to kill the germs on the surface of your skin, whereas soap and water removes it. Now, hand washing with soap or hand wash and water can actually remove all germs from your hands as well as dirt and potentially harmful chemicals. Whereas hand sanitizers, they can remove most germs, but they can't remove all germs. Specifically, they don't remove norovirus, clostridioides difficile, or cryptosporidia. These are 
microorganisms that cause diarrhea. And hand sanitizers cannot remove harmful chemicals off the skin surface like a good old fashioned hand washing. Will alcohol based hand sanitizers put you at risk for bacterial resistance? No. Read the ingredients carefully because there are hand sanitizers out there that are alcohol free and they have that antimicrobial ingredient benzalkonium chloride. Benzalkonium chloride based hand sanitizers are not as effective as an ethanol or alcohol based hand sanitizer. Again, at least 60% alcohol. What about wipes? Hand sanitizing wipes with at least 60% alcohol are an option. They can kill germs on the hands, although just like the hand sanitizer, they're not going to kill norovirus, Clostridioides difficile, or Cryptosporidia. Baby wipes, on the other hand, are not designed to properly remove germs from the hands. Then you have disinfecting wipes. Your disinfecting wipes are meant to sanitize surfaces, not your hands, and should not be used on the skin. They have ingredients that actually can be pretty irritating to the skin and ultimately cause so much irritation that they actually put you at risk for having not only contact dermatitis, but they also make for a more hospitable surface for germs coming in uh, and out competing the good bacteria on your skin. So don't, don't use a disinfecting wipe to sanitize your hands. Those are meant only for, for surface disinfection. And when you use those, protect your hands from them by wearing gloves. What is a good hand wash? As long as it's not an antibacterial hand wash, it's a reasonable place to start. Uh, but some hand washes are a lot more drying and irritating than others. Many nowadays have moisturizing ingredients added to help combat the issues around irritation. For a wash or soap to be effective for removing germs, it doesn't have to be labeled hand. That's the other thing to bear in mind. You could use a gentle face wash to wash your hands. You could use a gentle body wash to wash your hands. You could use uh, a baby shampoo to wash your hands. Towards the end of 2022, there was this big trend on TikTok where everybody was going out and buying Dial Soap as a acne treatment, which I don't recommend. Dial Soap, again, for the issues I've pointed out here, the emergence of resistant microorganisms, but dial soap on your face, oh, super irritating because it's not uh, an ideal pH for, for the skin of your face. It can cause a lot of dryness and irritation. And it's not an acne treatment. And there are much better acne fighting ingredients out there like salicylic acid cleanser. For whatever reason too, the people over on TikTok were like insistent that the yellow bar, the gold bar, was the was somehow unique from the others. And they all have benzalkonium chloride. None of them have triclosan anymore. Uh, that was removed and replaced with benzalkonium chloride. Now, to be clear, some surgeons do recommend that you bathe with dial soap prior to, to surgery, uh, perhaps uh, in an effort to cut down on surgical site infections. That's a different scenario. We're not talking about constantly bathing with it, constantly exposing yourself to it. Long story short, you don't need to be washing your hands with an antibacterial hand soap. And by continuing to choose antibacterial hand soaps over non-antibacterial hand soaps, you are contributing to a problem of resistant superbugs emerging, and that can be a huge public health problem long term. And you're also possibly contributing to your risk of uh, contact dermatitis and skin problems on the hands through disruption in the normal skin flora there. All right, y'all, I hope this video was informative, educational, and you enjoyed it. On the end slate, I'm going to put my video all about hand dermatitis, where I give some tips to deal with dry hands related to frequent hand washing, which you should wash your hands. Again, it's one of the most effective things you can do to prevent the spread of colds and flus and germs that make you and others sick, but it definitely can dry out your hands, so I share a lot of tips there to keep that from happening so much, so check that one out next, but if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.